Hey guys, Maggie L. Ram, Witch and Moon here. And today I'm coming to you with a little bit of a haul video. So some of it is kind of witchy and some of it isn't. It's just things that I'm really interested in right now and that I felt like I would really enjoy sharing with you. So I got all glammed up and we're gonna do a little bit of a haul. So first things first, um, I went to um, the flea market place the other day in my town and it was my first time there. And oh my god, it was so amazing. It's like three stories and there was so much stuff. I was in there for two hours and like I did not even see everything that was there. There was so much stuff and um, I found, I was walking around and I was just kind of shopping like I was just killing time that day. And um, I came across this little beauty right here. And she only cost three dollars and at first I walked by her and like 20 minutes after I walked by her I was like no I really have to go get her I just cannot stop thinking about her so she is home with me now and she is just really beautiful and um, she was labeled as a Spanish doll and she does have that kind of little Spanish vibe she has some nice little um, like coins and stuff on her and I just love her. I just had to have her. So then, then I was like, ooh, I wonder if I can find any more creepy dolls. So I did, and I found this booth that had a ton of dolls, and so I found this one there, and she looks like she's um, almost the same kind of brand, I guess, as the other one. She has the same kind of a Spanish, like Spain kind of feel to her, and I guess she's a bride. She has a little veil. But I just thought that they were beautiful. And they're not porcelain or anything. Their faces are cloth and their hands and legs and stuff are plastic, like a hard plastic. But um, I don't really know much about them. They were priced really cheaply, so I imagine they're not, you know, like a hot commodity kind of item or anything. But I thought that they were absolutely gorgeous and I had to bring them home. And so hopefully I want to incorporate some of them in an altar or something somewhere throughout the house. So I'll be doing some work with them soon. And then I found this one, and she is so adorable. She, her eyes open and close when you raise her, and she was just so like creepy cute and Victorian. She reminds me of like Jane Eyre almost, like the, her dress, and oh god, I just, I had to have her too. So I really like her. She's a redhead. So, I mean, how could, how could I pass that up? But yeah, I just love that. So I've also been uh, going nuts when it comes to books, and I'm going to be doing um, a book haul specifically soon, but I just wanted to show you guys um, a couple of things that I got, some which is some not. Uh, the first one um, I got is the Robert Cochran Letters. Um, this one is edited by Michael Howard. That's why I chose this one. It was expensive. It was fucking expensive on Amazon. Um, Especially for the fact that you can, I believe you can find all of the Robert Cochran letters online. So if that's something you're interested in, I recommend that. Um, but this does have some notes and stuff from Michael Howard. And um, kind of does a little bit of explaining about what the letters may be talking about. Because Robert Cochran tended to talk in a lot of like metaphors. And um, a lot of what he mentions is kind of like understood to the person that he's writing to or corresponding with. So um, check it out online first and see if it's something that you're interested in before uh, spending a lot of money. But this is a great book and I really do enjoy it. Um, another one that I've been reading lately is West Country Witches. Now this is a book authored by Michael Howard. It's by um, Three Hands Press, which I have an issue with this publishing company, but we'll talk about that in a later video because I have a lot more to cover today. Um, Michael Howard is a wonderful uh, resource if you're looking for information on um, like historical accounts of witchcraft. Uh, in this case, it would be um, the western part of uh, England or whatever, like uh, Devonshire and those types of places. Forgive me if my geography is off. I'm I'm not good at American geography, much less somewhere else. Um, but he does give a lot of citations. 
um, throughout the book. Uh, lists, he lists his source material and all that kind of stuff, which I think is wonderful. However, this book is a little on the drier side, and the um, he doesn't follow a consistent timeline. The timeline tends to jump around, so sometimes it's kind of confusing uh, reading certain stuff. My favorite part of this book is uh, him going into detail about uh, Cecil William, is it Cecil Williamson? Cecil Williams, the guy that owns the, uh, who owns the uh, witchcraft museum over there, somewhere, where it was. Um, but I, I, there was a lot of stuff about him that I did not know uh, before reading this. So if you really want like a really nice informative um, informational book about um, like witchcraft and history as far as uh, like European witchcraft and history I definitely really recommend this and uh, Michael Howard has several of these books out anyways there's one more that's supposed to be coming out on Amazon soon and um, I pre-ordered it and like I said the this publishing company is kind of sketchy so um, if you are gonna get this uh, just be careful um, I ordered this directly from the publisher and it took a really long time to get and they're not the friendliest, I don't think, uh, to deal with, and they don't have very good customer service. But a lot of these you can get from Amazon now, um, so I would recommend that, and you'll probably save a little bit of money, too. You know, I hate to send people away from the distributor, because generally, you know, I would always advise everybody to buy from the distributor, but they're kind of assholes, so I don't care about that. Next, okay, so this brings me to my next point. I have been so in love with like 60s, 70s, um, like, uh, like kind of naughty imagery lately. I've been, uh, I think it started whenever I was rewatching The Love Witch the other day, and fuck, I just love the way that that style looks. So I bought this book. It's called Cinerama. And it's a slee sex paperback of the 60s, and it has all of this amazing artwork um, from these uh, books that were written by these, I mean, they're all, it's all erotic fiction that was written in the early 60s, and this book actually talks about um, the censorship that these authors dealt with and how they kind of brought about um, a new age and when it came to literature and how they, you know, helped to break through that censorship barrier and how how much erotica has changed um, from this time, uh, from that time to now, and how now you can be a lot more open with your writing. You can say a lot more. Um, you can use a lot more visceral terms, I guess you could say. But this book is wonderful. I'm so, this is a great purchase. And like I said, I love the artwork. And I have some more books on my wish list right now on Amazon that I really want that do deal more with just the artists of this uh, type of style. And so I started thinking about all of that. And that got me into um, comic book art. And so I went to, there's two comic books, right, uh, comic book stores right by my house. And I was just, I fucking had to go there because a lot of what I looked at was a um, more 70s style, uh, comic book art as well as the, um, like the erotic novels and stuff, you know, stuff that really, um, had to deal with the like 70s sexploitation era, era, and, you know, where they were using a lot of, like, booby women on all these covers. And I just think that's amazing. Obviously, exploiting women is not amazing. But the artwork ugh, is just fucking phenomenal. So I went and I picked up some comic books. Some for inspiration and some just because they're awesome. So I'm going to show those to you now. So my by far my favorite is uh, Vampirella as far as artwork goes. She is just fucking on fire and there's an entire book dedicated um to the artwork of her the uh, artist who drew her back in the day and it's just wonderful and it has a lot to do with um a spanish artist during that time period and forgive me if i'm giving you misinformation but i haven't researched a whole lot into it just now i'm just kind of scratching the surface when it comes to uh the world of comic books um, I also got this Queen of the Vampires one, 
which I'm not super into vampires, but I guess because vampires are more associated with like sex and stuff like that anyways, they generally tend to be portrayed a little sexier. So I got that one. That's actually a pretty decent comic book. And then I found this treasure called Love Diary, which this is from, it doesn't have a date on it. Some of them were dated. This one I couldn't find a date for, but it's got to be from like early 60s era, I would say, judging by like the style of clothing and everything that they're wearing. But oh my God, it's so amazing. Like the dialogue in this is great. There's a lot of dialogue and it's just back and forth like these women having like men trouble and they're like, dear diary, so-and-so is so jealous of me. I'm going to teach him a lesson. And that is just, uh, oh God, it's so good. So I love that. Then I got this one called Pea Planned, which I haven't read too much into just yet, but I just loved. Even though this is a digital rendering and it's more modern, I really enjoyed that too of this chick. And like the first panel in the book is like somebody snorting coke off a hooker booby. So there's that. Um, then I got this. So um, I went from the booby girls into this really um, flat uh, type of artwork and I got this. This is actually a really great comic book. It's a newer one and I read this all up uh, just the other night and once I read it I loved it so much I had to go back and get the second one. So I think that there's five editions of this one out right now but if you're into comics um, this one's really good. It's like a, a crime romance uh, comic book, and the artwork is just really great. I love it so much. Um, I also got, because I'm a big Deadpool fan, especially the movie, so I got this because I love, um, I'm actually going to start working on a piece that's kind of inspired by this uh, silhouette kind of style right here. And so you can kind of see it. This one's not really silhouetted, but see how flat the images look? I'm sorry, I'm looking at the viewfinder. See how flat the images look? So I'm going to be working on a piece soon that has something to do with that. Then, like the same day that I went to the comic book store and got all these, um, one of my friends, Kelton, you might know, um, one of my friends showed me that they had just ordered the graphic novel version of the new Sabrina comic, which I fucking looked at whenever I was at the comic book store. And I was like... GD, I knew I should have gotten that, but I didn't get it because um, the store that I was at only had issues like 3, 4, and 5. They didn't have the first couple, and I'm weird about that. Like, I want to start at the beginning, but I got super, super jealous, so I decided that I was going to go back and just buy the earliest one and ask them if they could back order. So if you haven't seen this, this is the new um, Sabrina, like Sabrina the Teenage Witch uh, comic that's going on right now. And it is fucking, it is really awesome. They've made it really creepy. I actually haven't had a chance to start reading this yet. And I'm kind of, like, I'm kind of waiting for, to get the first and second copy. Because this is the, this is issue number three. But it's pretty awesome. And I'm really happy that I got it. But yeah, I think, that's it as far as hauls go.